respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah the Exalted says in the Quran, اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون ما يأتيهم من ذكر من ربهم محدث إلا استمعوه وهم يلعبون لا هي قلوبهم. The, the time for people's account, for people's reckoning, has come near while they are in the state of heedlessness, turning away. No new reminder come to them or comes to them from their Lord except that they listen to it while they play with their hearts paying no heed. Heedlessness is one of the most dispraised traits and qualities anyone can possess. Allah Azza wa Jal dispraised heedless people. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ He said about those whom he is dispraising, they know the outward aspect of this worldly life, meaning their livelihood and so on, while they are heedless of the hereafter. Unfortunately, one says, this is the state of most of us. We're experts when it comes to dunya. We're experts and professionals when it comes to worldly matters. We're up to date with everything. New smartphones, new technology, new cars, new artists, new athletes. We know their birthdays, their names, their wives or girlfriends' names, everything. Related to this dunya, many people are much acquainted with, have a lot of detailed knowledge about. While at the same time, unfortunately, we're very heedless of the hereafter. You see a, a, an intellectual person and you talk to him about any topic, He's like a walking encyclopedia, mashaAllah. The minute you switch the tone to religious, he becomes dumb, deaf, mute. The basics, in some cases, which stunned me, the basics of the faith, of the acts of worship, are close to null. This is dispraised. It is so dispraised that Allah warned Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from becoming heedless, saying, وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Don't be of those who are heedless. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us of heedlessness and its consequence. In the narration reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ And warn them of the day of regret when the matter will be settled. Yet now they continue to be heedless. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
And brothers and sisters, lend me your hearts and listen attentively to this hadith. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the people of Jannah enter Jannah and the people of fire enter fire, death will be brought. In some of the narrations, it will be put in the mirror on the sirat. In the form of a ram, which is white, spotted with black. And then, a call will be made. Ya Ahl al-Jannah, O people of Jannah, أَتَعْرِفُونَ هَذَا? Do you recognize this? فَيَشْرَئِبُونَ وَيَنْظُرُونَ They extend their necks and start looking. You know when you're trying to reach out with your eyes and look at something, you go like this, right? You extend your neck to focus and concentrate on what you're seeing. And they say, yes, this is death. And then a call will be made again. Ya Ahl al-Nar, O people of fire, do you recognize this? They extend their necks and look at it and say, yes, it is death. And then it will be said. It will be commanded. And then it will be commanded and this ram will be slaughtered. Death will be slaughtered. And it will be said to people, Ya Ahl al Jannati khuludun falamaut. O people of Jannah, it is eternity from now on that there is no death. Wa Ya Ahl al Nar, khuludun falamaut. O people of fire, it is eternity. There is no death after today. In one of the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, the people of fire will make such a loud cry. Had it not been that death was slaughtered, they would have died from that. And then, he ﷺ recited this verse. وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ The scholar said, this means that people of this dunya continue to be heedless until they're struck with death. What are things that cause a person to become heedless. Because if you know the cause, you can cure it, you can treat it, you can avoid it. When one of the things that lead to heedlessness is sinning. Al Muhasibi rahmatullahi alayhi said, sins lead to heedlessness. And heedlessness leads the heart to become hard. And a hard heart makes a person far from Allah. And being away from Allah leads you to fire. The Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ, as reported by Imam Muslim, gave an example of one of these sins that could lead a person to become heedless. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, either some people will stop neglecting the Friday prayers, meaning neglecting attending the Friday prayers, or Allah Azza wa Jal will seal their hearts and then they become amongst the heedless. So the sin of neglecting Salatul Jumu'ah 
can cause the heart to become sealed, closed, rusty, not accepting anything and not recognizing virtue, and then become heedless. Another cause of heedlessness is love. Obsession with this dunya. See, when you're obsessed and you want to collect more of it and indulge more in it, that leads you to heedlessness to the extent Billah, that a person would not matter, it would not matter to him whether he's collecting dunya from halal or from haram, as indicated by the Prophet. And he will continue to be heedless until he is struck with the reality of death. When the angel of death comes to him, with no permission or prior appointment. And then sorrow and regret at that moment is of no avail. Allah says in the Quran, Hatta idha jaa ahadahumul maut, qala rabbi rji'oon, لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتْ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخْ وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ until the time when death comes to one of them. Those heedless people, he will say, My Lord, bring me back. Why? Why do you want to go back? Perhaps I can do righteousness. I can do virtuous deeds in that which I left behind, meaning in life. And then Allah Azza wa responds to this by saying, Kalla! No! And Kalla in Arabic is used to aggressively rebuck someone in the speech. No! It is merely a word he is saying. It's a claim. You had the chance, but you didn't act. You had the opportunity, but you didn't do it. Kalla, innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. Wa mi waraihim barzakh. And behind them is a barrier. Death. Ila yawmi yub'athun. Until the day they will be resurrected. That's what heedlessness leads to. Another reason for one to be heedless is to simply be among the wrong people, befriending the wrong type of people. See, friends will either influence you or you will influence them. There is no neutral state. When you're around people, you're either strong enough to influence them or you're weak enough to be influenced by them. That's why the Prophet ﷺ warned us about the company we keep around because it will wear out on you. It will reflect on you. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ 
on the day when the wrongdoer will bite his hands. Can you imagine how regretful that person will be that day? He'll be biting his hands in sorrow and regret. And say, Woe to me, I wish I had taken with the messenger away. Meaning, I wish I had followed the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Woe to me, I wish I had not taken so and so a friend. For he has misguided me from the remembrance and made me, made me heedless. Don't say I'm strong enough. A lot of people come and complain to me about declining in faith. The first thing I ask them is, who's surrounding you? Who are your friends? What is the type of people you have placed yourself in the middle of? If you put yourself between people who hardly pray, you will hardly pray. If you put yourself amongst people who pray Qiyamul Layl, you will eventually improve yourself until you do so. You choose your state of faith by choosing the people you, stay around, you stick around with or you hang around with. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد How do I detect? How do I discover if I am heedless or not? I mean, are there signs that show that I am heedless? Yes, there are. If you feel that acts of worship are heavy on you, if you feel burdened when you're performing acts of worship, know that your heart is either heedless or strongly going to that direction. I've been in situations in Salat al-Jama'ah where people will be praying during the Salah when the Imam is reciting, right? And they will be going like this. What are you looking to watch for? You cannot conclude your Salah until he does. So relax and worship Allah. Why are you so hasty to conclude? You're in a bliss. So why rush out? Well, that's a sign. Feeling burdened by salah or by acts of worship, or feeling heavy when you're about the, the adhan is called, right? For those who hear the adhan, for example, he's sitting or she's sitting and sitting and sitting. For those men, iqama is called and they're still sitting. Salah is concluded and still sitting. Either doing nothing or busy with something else, right? For women, she'll be chatting on, on her iPhone or talking to a friend or doing nothing until the time of the following Salah comes. Oh, the Adhan is called, let me rush and pray the one before. And while at it, I'll pray this one as well. Subhanallah. That laziness is a sign of heedlessness. I've been in situations where I've arrived to the masjid in some, some mosques. I would arrive early and I would notice that some people are sitting and there's like 15 minutes to, for the salah to start or for the khutbah to start. And they're sitting, doing nothing. Not reciting the Quran, not saying any dhikr. They're just sitting like this. Waiting for the time to pass until it is time to listen to the Imam and then go home. I've, I've met some, some brothers here who attend or used to attend Khutbat al Jum'ah in their local masjid. And my first question naturally would be Do you understand Arabic? MashaAllah. Oh no, Shaykh, we don't. So why are you attending there? 
because I have to attend Salatul Jumu'ah. That's all. So laziness, being burdened. Number two, if you don't detest with your heart evil when you see it, that's another sign that your heart is heedless. If you don't feel disturbed when you see someone doing something wrong, then it's a wrong, it's, it's, a, it's a sign for something wrong in the heart. When you start undermining committing sins to the point that you can actually do it openly, because see some people think, some young men think it's manly to do things the way I want, even if it's haram, right? And that's heedlessness. And the fourth thing I would like to mention, there are many, but the fourth sign is when your time is being spent on useless matters. And useless here is with respect to akhirah. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullah alayhi, said, when Allah does not care about a person anymore, then He allows him to spend his time, or rather He said, to waste his time on useless matters. So when you notice that your time is either spent on TV, on your laptop, on smart devices, visiting this person or that person, going out on the account of worshiping, uh, worshiping Allah or improving and enhancing the state of faith and your nearness to Allah, then that's a sign of heedlessness. Heedless indeed and deprived is the one who knows that from sunrise until dhuhr, he has five to seven hours. And that Salatul Duha takes only two to three or four minutes. And he has six to seven hours. And yet he is unable to stand up before Allah, say Allahu Akbar for three minutes and pray two rakahs. Heedless and deprived indeed is the one who knows that from Salatul Isha until Fajr, he has seven to nine hours. And yet he is unable to wake up 10 minutes before Salatul Fajr and pray one rak'ah for witr that will take him a couple of minutes. Heedless and deprived indeed, the one who knows that out of the 24 hours of the day, he only needs 20 to 30 or 35 minutes to recite one juz of Quran. And yet, and yet, he finds no time to do so. Heedless and deprived indeed is the one who knows that this tongue is an organ that never gets tired. And yet, he is unable to move it, mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal the entire 24 hours. And if he does, he seldomly does. This is how our lives pass, brothers and sisters, while we are heedless. Our lives are being wasted. We spend time on useless matters. We're not investing for the hereafter. But the time is still there and the opportunity is still there because we're still alive. Let us take advantage of this opportunity which many people who are under soil wish to have a second of it to increase their good deeds. To try to overweigh the scale of good deeds over the bad ones. Let's strive to rescue ourselves. Let's build our homes up there in Jannah. The time is still there. So what do I do to get myself out of the state of heedlessness? You can do a lot. Abundantly mention Allah, dhikr, 
And the best of all dhikr is Quran. Knowledge. Learn about Allah. Learn the qualities of Allah so you know whom you're worshiping. And you know whose punishment you're trying to avoid. Stick around pious and righteous people. Go to the masjid for men because you will either meet someone who's pious, whom you see a good quality in and try to imitate and adopt, or see someone with knowledge who might tell you something that will enrich your knowledge and your faith. Pray even if it's two rak'ahs of qiyam. That won't take more than five to six minutes. And if you're lucky and blessed and can supplicate Allah when you're in sujood, then you might take a couple of more minutes after that. And don't forget the most important weapon any Muslim has. Dua in all times for Allah Azza wa Jal to purify your heart, to make it firm on faith, to make you heedful of Him and the hereafter. And finally, brothers, the mention of death, talking about it, reminding others with it, is indeed an eye-opener and a heads-up. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cleanse our hearts from heedlessness and to bring us back to His path and to wake us up before we wake up at the call of death. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا وعفو عنا